Okay guys, we're gonna talk a couple of quick things on NH3 coolers and how they function, how they work, and how um, they can help solve a few of the problems that they're having. So we have an inlet side, comes in here, we got main uh, manual shut off. We have gas and liquid enters in here. It comes down inside of here, the sure turn comes out here. Um, this is from the tank comes straight from the tank this goes out to our row unit um, that is completely separate there's no fluid that exchanges in between inlet and outlet with our vapor we get our vapor this is a, a raven vortex cooler our vapor comes out of here so it comes out of our control valve master on off valve and then this goes down and goes out to our row units our sections in this case um, but also we have liquid and hydras that comes out of here this is a strainer the strainer can get plugged um, feeds this little 3 8 inch line here comes all the way back up into this orifice valve and this orifice valve has to have a letter showing in this window i don't know if you can see this or not but you loosen up this thumb screw and you rotate this and you look in this hole here and you should have a, uh, a letter a b c or d um, most units are going to be run on c uh, there's a there's a uh, calculation to go through for um, how many gallons per minute this unit's going to flow so if we have somebody call up and is complaining about rate fluctuation issues first thing guys want to do is say oh it's our flow meter oh it's our flow meter i can almost guarantee you that if you're getting some sort of reading on that flow meter that it's not the flow meter um, we get a lot of flow meters that are, are replaced that don't need to be we get a lot of sensors that are replaced that probably don't need to be not to say that i've never ran into flow meter issues before but very rarely does it happen more often than it happens is we're not getting any vapor coming out of this uh uh, cooler. So what happens is this is liquid and gas coming in. Our cooler, if it's doing right, should have only liquid coming out of here. Comes down, have liquid out of this 3 8 inch line. So either um, one option is that this strainer, and some op uh, some coolers don't have this strainer, but it could have this hose bar be plugged up here, and we're not getting any liquid and hydrous to come back through the cooler put back into uh, so it looks like that these two are connected but it, they are not what happens is there's a little uh, 3 8 inch line that runs on the inside of that clear to the other end so this liquid anhydrous here runs in the outside of this tube um, inside of here and changes from liquid to gas and then comes out of these 3 quarter inch um, vapor fittings and when it goes from liquid to gas is how we get our cooling effect and how we can keep our um, anhydrous liquid so that we can meter it. So when we have problems with fluctuating um, rates, what is happening is that we're trying to meter liquid and gas at the same time. And that doesn't work. That's when our, our flow meter goes, sees liquid, it, it spins at an appropriate rate, and all of a sudden it gets a big move to gas. And it, and it just takes off spinning and so we get this rate fluctuating up down up down so first thing i have guys do when we have rate fluctuating issues is pull off a vapor line so you can either pull it off here or you can pull it off back there at the row unit pull it off here and see how much pressure you have coming out of here and this is on the same with uh, or even or a, a continental torpedo or a torpedo or really the raven the older ravens are, are pretty notorious about doing this because they have a little tiny orifice uh, spot in the other end of this cooler. Uh, when you take it apart, you take these four bolts off and slide that tube out of the middle, and there's a little orifice spot that gets plugged up. Um, taking a cooler apart is probably about our last resort because we can blow air into this cooler to try to loosen up the temperature so there. There's two sides here. We put our hand over one side and put air into this side. We should have pressure, pressure air coming out of here. We can push it back the other way. Blow up through here and we'll come out to the vapor inside of this uh, cooler. So, first thing I do is have people pull this off. If there is vapor coming out of here, 
then maybe we're just going to start looking at whatever what other issues we have like a, a flow meter there should be tank pressure so half of whatever tank pressure is so if we've got a nice warm day today and we've got 80 90 pounds of tank pressure this would be you know 40 psi coming out of this, uh, this board. 40 coming out of the board so we have three eighths inch line of a spline 90 or tank pressure and then whatever that is is going to be divided into two and um, so, so somewhere around you know 30 40 psi we'll see this should be blown out of here pretty good until we get a good flow of vapor coming out of there our, our cooler is not going to be operating correctly so if we don't have any vapor coming out of here then we have to go look at the supply so that is here so we can pull this line off be very very careful when you're pulling this line off because it'll have liquid and hydrous in it make sure that you're wearing a mask and gloves if, at very least um, we have respirators that um, will help us out make sure you're doing this where the wind will uh, be in your favor uh, be very conscious about this be careful about the ones you have working around you if you pull one of these coolers apart they will trap and hydrous in the bottom of these coolers and um, I've seen, seen bad things happen to guys before uh, when you're starting taking, taking these apart uh, I've made up some fittings to hook an airline up to so that you can you can flush the airline or flush these coolers out so you can get your service truck you can hook your airline up to there and open the system up and blow all of them. that's a good place to start when we're talking about blockages and coolers it's not it's not necessarily going to get all of it out so just be conscious that there's going to be trapped in hydrous in every place you you take apart so when you take this line off don't have it face towards you have a rag or something like that over the top of it to help um, you know keep that from getting you get sprayed in the face with an hydrous but <clears throat> we'll pull this off here stick it up in there wire it up in there go run see if there's an hydrous coming out of this line so if we don't have an hydrous coming out of this line you follow it back this is the supply um, check the strainer maybe we, before we pull this line off here we're going to check the strainer anyways and see if we if we've got something coming out of there um, this is if if the tool is putting on an hydrous we're going to have an hydrous flowing right here and so uh, we need to make the jump from here to here somehow and we can, we'll probably have a blockage in in the strainer is a good place to block if it doesn't have the strainer we'll block this um, barb if if the barb doesn't block these orifices you can kind of see there's an orifice right there on the corner will get plugged up and so sometimes rotating it to a different orifice um, will we'll help out too so um, older units that don't have this just have a hose barb that runs back and um, up into the bottom side of here and that hose barb is actually the orifice so if you pull that hose barb out it's just has a small hole in the center of it and it gets plugged in so there's a couple of tips and tricks um, to hopefully help you get your anhydrous system working again